Hey there, Internet. My name is John Hammond, and this is more Pico CTF. Back at the binary exploitation category in level 2, kind of backtracking because I still think that shell Z, 55 points, is actually the challenge that's supposed to come after shells with an S for 70 points. Because it says, you no longer have an easy thing to call, but you have more space. Program shells and source connect on the remote, like here. So let's go ahead and download these files. I've got them set up in a directory I've created for this challenge. Let's go ahead and grab them and we can take a look at what the hints say here. They say, there's already a bunch of pre-existing shell code out there. So, okay, let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got a binary and some code, so let's take a look at the source code. It looks to be identical to what we were working with before, However, we no longer have that win function that we could just easily call, and the amount of stuff we're taking in is 40 bytes now rather than 10. So we can't do that easy, like, okay, push the memory address on the stack, return, essentially call that function. We've got to do something else here. Um, so initially, I tried to go through this with the pwn tools method that I was explaining in a previous video, uh, or just discussing that we can, if we wanted to, use pwn tools, import pwn to pwn dot shellcraft to try and craft our own shell code with the architecture that we're working with and we can check out the binary here again intel 386 and linux so 386 linux we could just run cat and then pass in the argument flag dot text to try and generate shell code to do that operation again pwn dot assembly to wrap that and get it in the opcodes, and then we could just have Python spit this out and work with it. However, I did not get that to work when I worked with this binary here. I'll show it to you. We've got it out on standard output. Pipe it into shells once we mark that as executable. Cool, so now that we've got the binary going, we can pump that into the binary. However, I just get a seg fault and I end up not getting a flag.txt, which even if I had, it wouldn't display out on the screen as you can see. So that didn't work for me, but I point to you, I, I point you to that in case sometimes it does. Um, I think the Pwn Tools library for generating shellcode does some strange things and for odd reasons and I don't know why. So it's not always trustworthy, but worth trying. The other resource that I recommended and I suggested earlier was Shellstorm. And in this case where the challenge hint tells us that there's a bunch of pre-existing shellcode out there, let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got here. Shellstorm Shell's code's database, it's just shell-storm.org and shellcode. And again, they are organized by architecture, system, blah, blah, blah. So we've got Linux, the category here. We're not working on an ARM processor, we're working on an Intel 386. So x86 is just fine. And then we'll start to see what options do we have here? What can we run? We can do some simple Caesar cipher rotations, chmods, reverse TCP, uh, reverse shells, blah, 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 binding ports, etc., fork bombs, and there's a lot here. So some cool options, and we only have 40 bytes, keep in mind. So we wouldn't have been able to do some of these when we were only able to pass in 10 bytes in the previous challenge, but we can do some good stuff in this one. So as I kept scrolling here, I found one that does something that I know will work well, and that it's executing bin bash with the tack p argument, and I've, I know that that is just trustworthy. For some reason, when we run bin bash and it's got some sh and tack b there, it always, te it always seems to keep a stable shell for me. So uh, that's 33 bytes, it says right here, so I figured, okay, let's take a look at what this code is. Um, they showcase it in what it's actually running for the assembly, and it gives us just the opcodes right here as a string. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this. I'll open up to blind text. I'm going to use some control H to find and replace. We'll get rid of all those space characters. Pretty easy. Control enter to find them all. Uh, remove all those quotes, and then let's remove new lines. So I can copy and paste that, and just Python will work with that super easy. Taxi, print, and now we've got bin bash just rolling. Okay, so let's try it for our local binary, dot run shells, and it does an error, but it doesn't give us a shell. Um, so I'm, we're wondering why that is. However, there's an interesting thing here, or a phenomenon that's occurring, where the shell is opening, not knowing that it can read in inputs, and just crashing and dying on us. So what we can do is we can actually, before we pipe all that output into the binary, if we wrap it in parentheses, and actually put a semicolon here followed by cat, cat will keep our standard input or that buffer open for us. So 
it's as if the shell will stay in existence and we can actually interact with it. So if I hit enter on this, you can see the program ran through, it took in our input, and now a shell is actually occurring. <laughs> so I can type here, it'll do things. Okay, <laughs> getting bin bash errors, please sub's not a command, but other commands are. So if I wanted to, we could cat that flag.txt and we'll do that for the remote service now. Now that we've got that exploit and that payload working, let's go ahead and take the actual connection. I don't know why I downloaded that. Whoops. Take the connection string, paste it in, netcat to it, and now we've got a shell on the remote box. We've got a cool files here with shell, with ASLR, address space layout randomization, a wrapper, etc., and flag.txt. Let's check out what that is, cat flag.txt, and we've got it. Cool. If we wanted to, we could just save all that as like a get shell script. We don't need a get flag in this case because we've already like rocked this challenge and that we have shell execution. So let's go ahead and just do that. Bin bash, easy shebang line. Oh, what did I, I failed there. Stupid me did not paste the entire command in. Whatever. Whew. Okay, now we're rocking. Cool. So we can mark that challenge as complete. We can go ahead and submit the flag. And we are good. Up another 55 points on the scoreboard. However, it should have been 70 because of that weird challenge conflict. But whatever. Quick special shout out to the people that support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so, so much. $1 a month or more on Patreon will give you a special shout out just like this at the end of every video. $5 or more on Patreon will give you early access for the release on YouTube before it goes live. If you did like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Link in the description to our Discord server. Please come out with me. Cool community CTO players, programmers, and hackers. I'd love to see you guys on Patreon and I'd love to see you in the next video. I hate doing that, but I have to. It puts food on the table and stuff, you know?